Well, good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to you all. Thank you for dedicating your precious time to join us here in Brussels for our fifth Kenshiki Forum. It's a real pleasure to see so many familiar faces, and as always, today we have some important insights to share with you regarding not just our current business performance and our short-term outlook, but also our mid-term future product plans and the strategic priorities for the European region. Now, since we met last year, I think it's fair to say that the automotive industry continues to experience some turbulence and is preparing to face a growing number of headwinds. Turmoil in the financial markets and levels of inflation that we haven't seen for decades are certainly impacting consumer confidence and spending. Nevertheless, customer expectations continue to be resilient when it comes to the environment, and our regulatory obligations remain at an unprecedented level. Europe continues to be the fastest changing region in the world when it comes to ambitious mobility and environmental goals, and it's clear that we're in a period of fundamental transformation. But in that rapidly evolving world, I can tell you that we at Toyota are determined to continue to meet the ever-changing needs of our customers and to deliver on our environmental responsibilities and commitments. Today, we'll explain how we plan to successfully navigate all of these changes. And to do that, I'm delighted to be joined by Simon Humphreys, our Chief Branding Officer and uh, Board Member of Toyota Motor Corporation, and also by Yoshihiro Nakata, President and CEO of Toyota Motor Europe. And let me also introduce Takashi Watanabe, President of Lexus International. Watanabe-san, thank you for traveling to be here to support us today. Together, we'll give you an insight into our global thinking and the important role that Europe has to play in leading the way for global Toyota. But before we look forward, let me start by reflecting on our latest regional results and performance. This time last year, I hesitated to give you a sales forecast for 2023 due to the very uncertain supply situation. But I did say that I expected some volume growth. Today, I'm pleased to confirm that we expect to sell a total volume of 1.17 million Toyota and Lexus vehicles in 2023, which is almost 100,000 vehicles higher than last year. Lexus has made an important contribution to this result, thanks to a fully rejuvenated product lineup and an easing of our global supply restrictions. And we've also benefited from the continued expansion of Toyota Professional, our light commercial vehicle range. Looking forward to next year, although many of our competitors have seen demand rapidly erode, we have maintained a healthy order bank of over 300,000 vehicles, which will support a strong start of sales in 2024. And with new and important model launches ahead, we're very confident of continued sales growth, despite what we expect to be a flat market. Next year, Lexus will again be a key contributor to our sales increase. The new Lexus LM has captured the imagination of people looking for the ultimate in spacious luxury transport. Order intake is actually around five times higher than we originally expected. But the real growth driver will of course come with the first deliveries of the new Lexus LBX. Designed to appeal to a new target customer group for Lexus, this luxury urban crossover inherits a true Lexus DNA, despite its compact dimensions. 
We're delighted to read your initial feedback and to see the early interest from new potential customers, both of which indicate that LBX will be a high conquest model and a new growth engine for the Lexus brand in Europe. Turning to Toyota, we expect the new CHR to have a big impact on our sales next year. With its distinctive and emotional styling, plus its extended hybrid and plug-in hybrid powertrain choices, it will further boost our product power. And I'm delighted that it's been shortlisted as one of the finalists of Car of the Year 2024. Your feedback from the world premiere and the recent Dynamic Press launch has given us great confidence that the new CHR will play a key role in our continued European business growth. Our product power will be further enhanced by the introduction of the new Yaris and the new Yaris Cross with upgraded safety and multimedia systems and a wider range of hybrid powertrain options. And of course, next year we'll see the European launch of the all-new Toyota Land Cruiser. This iconic vehicle continues to raise the bar for off-road capability and set new standards for our legendary quality, durability and reliability. Despite the emissions legislation here in Europe, enthusiasm and initial demand for this car is overwhelming. And with a 48 volt hybrid option also available to order from next year, I don't think that situation will change anytime soon. The increasing customer demand for our widening portfolio of electrified models, whether hybrid, plug-in hybrid, battery electric, and fuel cell electric, all of which increased this year, is set to grow again next year. In 2022, our electrified mix was 66%. That will rise to 71% this year. And next year, we expect our electrified sales mix to exceed 75%. But as I look forward in this fast-changing and uncertain world, I'm confident that we are well-equipped to meet changing consumer needs and to successfully navigate the electrification transition, even in the world's first and only national zero emission vehicle environment. Of course, I'm talking about the UK, where ZEVs will have to make up at least 22% of all new vehicle sales already in 2024, and reach 80% of sales by 2030. Today, we offer eight zero emission vehicle models in Europe, which is perhaps a wider portfolio than many people are aware of. With this lineup, we're also confident of maintaining our status as one of the leading players in Norway, where ZEVs already account for 75% of the market, or more than 90% in the case of the premium segment. But at the same time, our diverse powertrain lineup, something that we refer to as multi-path, will also allow us to continue to perform strongly in markets that are not so far along the path to zero emissions mobility. Our eight ZEVs sit alongside more than 25 hybrid and plug-in hybrids in a wide portfolio of lower emission solutions. And this allows customers to choose a Toyota or Lexus model to reduce their carbon impact today, irrespective of their local environment or infrastructure status. Today, our portfolio also still includes some vehicles that are not electrified, but serve a specific mobility or accessibility purpose. For instance, there's Igo Cross, a model that allows us to offer our customers a relatively low cost of entry to mobility with all the safety features that you expect from Toyota. Our determination to maintain Igo Cross 
in the accessible entry segment, a segment that many other brands have abandoned, demonstrates our mobility for all and no one left behind philosophies. In the future, we're planning to carefully evolve our model portfolio to continue to give all customers the opportunity to reduce their carbon footprint. And this is because of our long-held commitment to provide mobility for all, regardless of the customer's environment, their financial status, their physical capability or product need. This important principle was again highlighted at the Japan Mobility Show last month, where Mobility for All provided an important backdrop to the diverse product concepts that we presented. And to tell us more about that, I'm delighted to welcome Simon Humphreys, our Chief Branding Officer and TMC Well, Kenshiki this year uh, comes hot off the heels of the Japan Mobility Show. And I know that we saw some of you there, and I hope that we surprised you with the variety of products that we presented. You know, very simply, our intention was to paint a picture of the future of mobility, not only for the 1.1 million visitors in Japan, but for the whole world. Now, when you put mobility and future in the same sentence, it's kind of easy to jump to a stereotypical ideal of high-tech dreams. And don't get me wrong, we dream as much as anyone. After all, we're already making flying cars, making a lunar cruiser, and even robots that use elevators. And that's an important and awe-inspiring part of taking mobility to the next level. But it's not everything. For us, what mobility comes down to is freedom. And with freedom comes opportunity. Now, at Toyota, we believe that everyone should have access to the opportunity that mobility provides, wherever in the world they live, whatever their situation. And for many people around the world, the dream of future mobility is simply finding a way to get mobile. And the IMV Zero that we displayed at Tokyo, well, literally, it's a revolution in simplicity. A product designed not only for a low price point, but more importantly, as a canvas for opportunity. The opportunity to define how you use the vehicle on your own terms. The IMV Zero, it's fully functional, yet only 70% defined at point of sale. The rest, Ah, it's up to you, whether it's transporting goods, running a cafe, build your own car at your own pace, to your own budget, and for your own unique needs. This is a positive cycle, not only for the customer, but also for the wider community. And it may sound idealistic, but what we really want to do is to sell opportunity itself. So for many people in rising economies, the ability to define their own mobility is one new opportunity. But for many others around the world, mobility is the opportunity for independence itself. There are 1.3 billion people globally who experience serious disability. And we believe we should try our best to help as many as possible to live life to the full. Now, Toyota has long sponsored Olympic and Paralympic athletes. And one of them is Taiki Mori. And he's a four-time Paralympic medalist in alpine skiing. And he obviously loves the excitement of skiing, but he also loves to drive. So together, we developed a system called the Neo Steer, which allows total control of the vehicle without the use of the lower body, even on a track. And in the words of Mori-san, it allows him to do it in style. We put these systems in place for everyone to experience at the mobility show. And I think the results, they speak for themselves. Smiles on everyone's faces. Now, this is just one reminder 
that mobility is about so much more than four wheels and a powertrain. It's about understanding people, their needs, and their aspirations. Because only then can we anticipate the opportunities that they seek. And I believe that this will be even more relevant in the future. People's lives around the world are changing at a rapid pace from what we wear to what we eat, from what we watch to where we sleep, from how we work to how we learn. Unlimited choice has become ingrained in people's lives. Gone are the days of mass trends in design and fashion. The expansion of choice has given people the flexibility to align their consumption with their own unique values. They're empowered and confident to live their lives in their own way. So from our point of view, how do we mass produce unique choice? Now, we believe our multi-pathway approach is quite simply a start to answering this question. It's a palette of opportunities for people all around the world. But we're also acutely aware that BEV is an increasingly important ingredient in this mix. And we believe that Lexus is the ideal brand to explore the fuel potential. Now, Lexus was born a disruptor. Since its founding, Lexus has proved time and time again that it can disrupt the industry by anticipating customer desires. It anticipated that the car ownership experience could be more than a car. It anticipated that the sedan was not the only answer to prestige mobility. And it anticipated that being environmentally conscious could be a part of the luxury experience. Now, this ability to push boundaries at every available opportunity is crucial in answering the future customers' expectations for ever more choice. And these future customers will be unwilling to compromise when it comes to emotional desires and functional needs. They will expect specific solutions to their diverse lifestyles, and they will expect their digital lives to be seamlessly and intuitively built in. They'll expect ecological solutions, but they'll also want exhilaration. So in anticipation of all this, the catalyst for a new direction, the Lexus LFZC. What do you think? Do you like it? <laughs> this is a car that we intend to bring to the road in 2026. And to do so, we're going to have to push the boundaries in three key areas. Firstly, we want to achieve the most efficient engineering without losing one ounce of emotion. No compromises. And that begins with maximizing space and layout efficiency radically changing the distribution of space between human and machine. The driver moves forward, the front of the vehicle is dramatically reduced in size for incredibly visibility, all within a beautiful, sleek silhouette. It's all about more from less. More emotional design, more space and flexibility, more driver engagement, more precision all round all from a lighter, smaller, and more aer aerodynamic structure. Now, Japan is famed for ingenuity and engineering, and the key to achieving these breakthrough is component minimization and reduction, from battery height to HVAC to motors to steer-by-wire. Secondly, the LFZC is a catalyst for digital and physical synergy. The synergy of hardware with the all-new 
a rain operating system, creates a car that grows with the owner, increasing the experiential value over time. And we want everyone, including the driver, to engage in these new experiences, both enjoyably and safely. Now, in a fundamentally new approach, content will be displayed depending on the situation. An intuitive and simpler user interface that anticipates your specific needs. And together with software enabled hardware, it will allow personalized driving experiences like no other. And it doesn't end there. The car is the greatest moving sensor that there is. It can see, it can touch, it can hear, it can even smell. And all this will give the potential for application makers to create breakthrough content such as digital interaction with the surrounding world in real time. Unique content born from motion. And thirdly, diversity. You know, the BEV age has only just begun and it won't be long before the conversation moves past the fundamentals of battery range, charging time. People are always looking for new ways to enjoy and express themselves. And the desire for new lifestyle solutions will come to the forefront. With adaptability built in from the outset, our next generation modular architecture will allow us to push the boundaries in every segment going forward. Not only the Lexus brand, but also the Toyota lineup. So let's take a look at the ultra versatile FT3. Okay, thank you very much. What do you think? So, you know, creating platform versatility to answer those desires is absolutely critical, even if it's for pure exhilaration. That's right, every part of the company will benefit from this new platform, and that includes GR. But more about that later. In the meantime, I'd like to hand you over to Nakata. Thank you, Simon. Good afternoon, everybody. I believe the role and vision of Toyota globally is well understood. At Toyota, we believe we contribute a lot to the future of mobility, and we will continue on this path by focusing on electrification, intelligence, and diversity. As President Sato said recently, the future is something that we all create together. Let's change the future of the cars. In Europe, we have the same vision. And in key areas like environment, we are leading the way. For instance, here in Europe, we are going faster towards carbon neutrality than the global Toyota organization. Stakeholder expectations towards the business have increased, and regulation are getting stricter. But most importantly, and most powerfully, it's consumer sentiment that is driving change. This is happening globally, but it's happening faster here in Europe. You probably feel this yourself. Let me ask you, are you making more environmentally conscious decisions compared to five years ago? You are not alone. 
87% of European consumers believe there is an urgent need to address climate change. But of course, the situation country by country is different. That's why Toyota's approach is to be the best in town. This means we aim to positively contribute to the environment of each region, country, or city by providing the right solution to meet local needs. More than 50 countries means more than 50 solutions towards carbon neutrality. This is why Toyota believe in the positive impact of the mulch pass approach to carbon reduction. Last year, Toyota was certified by SBTA as meeting the 1.5 degrees standard for its global scope one and two reduction target. This gives independent confirmation that we are on the right path to meet our global carbon neutrality commitment for 2050. In Europe, we announced last year that we expect to be fully carbon neutral here by 2040, 10 years earlier than global Toyota. There are several key steps in our journey. The first step covers step one and two where by 2030. All of our own facilities, including offices, L&D facilities, warehouses, and manufacturing plants will be carbon neutral. The next step related to scope three. By 2035, we will have a lineup with 100% CO2 reduction. And then by 2040, we will have achieved full carbon neutrality in logistic and value chain. Last year, we highlighted a number of examples of what we are doing achieve carbon neutrality in our facilities. This includes the use of 100% green electricity and biogas for heating. We are also moving forward with scope three carbon reduction. For instance, here in Belgium, we are just about to start using hydrogen fuel cell trucks on four of our key logistical routes including across the borders into France, Germany, and Netherlands. Not only does this approach reduce carbon emission to zero, but it also has the effect of stimulating the hydrogen refueling infrastructure. We believe the carbon reduction benefit of scaling this approach to the thousands of logistic routes across Europe could be huge. Let me also highlight the average CO2 emission of our new cars. Historically, we have delivered the lowest corporate average fuel economy figures in Europe and have consistently beaten the EU targets thanks to widespread availability of our hybrid technologies. Now, as we move towards 2035, we are determined to remain ahead of the curves. This is where the power of our much pathway approach to carbon reduction can be seen. No matter which country or environment the customer is in, Toyota has the right technology today and tomorrow to make sure they can choose a low emission solution. Mobility for all, leaving no one behind, are two fundamentals of who we are and what we have consistently aimed to achieve. This philosophy highlights that Toyota's approach to carbon reduction is not just about tomorrow. It's also about today. And perhaps 
more importantly for the environment, it was also about yesterday. At this point, I believe it's important to say that even though we will continue to offer much carbon reduction technologies, we will also steadily increase the number of zero emission vehicles we offer to customers. By 2026, we will offer consumers the choice of around 15 Jevs and the Toyota brand. This, of course, includes the six dedicated battery EVs we previously confirmed for launch by 2026. BZ2X was the first. Following a number of Kaizen actions, the BZ4X is now performing well in market. Its key attributes of a confident drive, spacious packaging, and improved range visibility are seen by increasing number of customers as appealing. The result is that BZ4X is now building its sales plan, and in Norway, where EVs are dominating, it's number three in segment with a 15% market share. Now, turning to the 6x26 plan, let me give you an update. Last year, we showed you the compact SUV. With a smaller footprint, it's clearly a vehicle intended for the important C segment in Europe. The earlier this year, we revealed sport crossover concept. Now, for the first time, we'd like to give you the opportunity to see it in Europe. Let's take a look. What do you think? The sports crossover concept features a sleek coupe style design, which makes it the perfect style hero for BEV portfolio. It's longer and wider and lower than the BZ4X and is interested to appeal to those who prioritize style above functionality. So now you have a pretty good idea of how to hold a plan dedicated EV portfolio. Let's take the next step. Thinking about the European market in particular, there is a big demand for more compact products. And indeed, given our success in A, B, and C segment in Europe, it's natural our customer would like to be asking us to look at those areas. Our response is a product that is even smaller than the compact SUV concept. So let's take a look. Here it is. It has a kind of compact footprint and higher driving position that many customers in urban environments are looking for. Stylish, versatile. This model gives a strong indication of what will be a key contributor to our BEV sales here in Europe. We plan to reveal the production version of this car in the first half of next year. Now, you have an idea of four of the six dedicated BEV 
models we will launch in Europe. Are you curious to know about the next two? Well, let's just say we are looking to further expand the portfolio to cover a wider range of customers. And maybe you'll learn more about that in the deep dive. As, as I mentioned earlier, by 2026, our ZEV portfolio will have grown to over 15 models. And the resulting sales volume will have significantly increased compared to today. By then, we anticipate that our BEV mix in Europe will be over 20% and total volume of more than 250,000 vehicles. We've always been clear that local production of BEVs would come when we are able to secure sustainable volume. We believe we'll be able to make that step around this time frame. I know you want to know more about this topic, but sorry, I'll have to wait a little longer for that information. Turning to alternative zero emission technologies, we will continue to challenge by developing a number of pathways, including hydrogen combustion, if you will, and of course, hydrogen fuel cell. I believe it's important to confirm that we are not giving up on hydrogen fuel cell products like the Mirai or the newly launched Crown fuel cell EV. On the contrary, we believe the growing infrastructure stimulated by wider hydrogen use will create an even more compelling reason to choose fuel cell technology for personal mobility in the future. The European Commission has a great confidence in this approach leading to a 45 billion euro investment in hydrogen overall. And the EU's Transport Infrastructure Fund has awarded 284 million euros, or around one third of its budget, for the installation of hydrogen refueling stations. Toyota would like to strongly contribute to establishing a hydrogen society in Europe. Even though we have the technology, we cannot fully leverage the full potential of our own. We need to collaborate together with like-minded partners to fully establish a hydrogen society. Momentum is growing, and we are receiving more and more inquiries about our technology and products. Therefore, on a global level, we have established the hydrogen factory to operate together with the BEV factory. To be clear, this doesn't mean we are looking to enter the business of making hydrogen, but does point towards a coordinated approach to the commercialization of hydrogen technology, spanning everything from development and production through sales and after sales. At the same time, our fuel cell development continues, to, continues at pace, and we are planning to launch our third generation technology in 2026. To respond to the increasing level of activities, we are formalizing a dedicated business unit that we call Toyota Hydrogen Factory Europe. This unit will be responsible for producing a growing number of fuel cell systems and support the increasing group of commercial partners. Many of our systems will make their way into trucks, coaches, buses, mailing applications, and stationary power systems. And an increasing number will make their way into light duty vehicles such as passenger cars and pickup trucks. Back in September, we presented a prototype version of a hydrogen fuel cell Hilux. Development is continuing very well, and we are getting ready to demonstrate it to customers and you, the media, 
in the coming months. Hilux, of course, is chosen by many customers who need a reliable vehicle to undertake their daily work. As such, it forms a key part of our Toyota professional fleet. To tell us more about the Toyota professional, let me invite Matt back on stage. That's all. Thank you. So thank you, Nakata-san. Hilux is, of course, a brand icon for Toyota, and it will continue to play a very important role for us, particularly in the business sector. We're also honored that it's the current holder of the Pickup of the Year Award. However, when we look at the wider commercial vehicle market, it's clear that we need to serve a broader group of customers and must further expand our portfolio. The solution that we identified several years ago was to partner with Stellantis. Our strategic partnership began in 2016 with Proace. We then added the Proace City in 2019, and then the Proace Electric in 2020, and the Proace City Electric in 2021. It's clearly a very successful alliance. Last year, we sold more than 119,000 light commercial vehicles, and this year, we expect sales to increase to over 140,000 vehicles. That's a growth of more than 20%. In addition to offering highly competitive products, our clear advantage is our excellent retail network where customer satisfaction will always be the number one priority. Our medium-term ambition is to continue to grow our commercial vehicle business with the objective of becoming a top six player in 2025. To try to realize this ambition, we must further expand our vehicle range, as well as to offer an increased choice of electrified powertrains. Today, we're missing a model to compete in a key part of the market, the heavy duty or the large van sector, which currently accounts for 31% of the commercial vehicle market. But I'm very pleased to announce that we now have a solution, thanks to a further expansion of our partnership with Stellantis. I can present to you today a new addition to the ProAce range, the new ProAce Max. Proace Max really is quite large, which is one of the reasons that we had to display it outside. It will be available in three lengths and three heights to ensure that customers can choose the configuration that best suits their needs. It will also come with the option of a low emissions diesel engine, but it's the battery electric version that will generate most attention. It's 110 kilowatt hour battery pack gives a WLTP range of up to 420 kilometers, which is best in class. The Proyce Max Electric will also feature a best in class load space volume of 17 cubic meters, a best in class payload of 1.5 tons, and a best in class towing capacity of two tons. It's a powerful addition to the ProAce lineup, which now offers a full range of diesel 
and electric options to suit all customer needs and all operating environments. The Proace Max is also introduced at a time when we're making significant upgrades to the rest of the Proace range. Our compact city van, Proace City, will be upgraded to benefit from the latest safety and connected technology and an improved EV range of 330 kilometers, which is an increase of 50 kilometers. And our medium-sized van, Proace, will benefit from those same safety and connected technology features and an EV range that's increased by 20 kilometers to 350 kilometers. But that's not all. We're also widening the Hilux offer to fully refresh our light commercial vehicle portfolio. Hilux will also receive an electrification boost, this time in the form of a hybrid 48 volt system. This new technology will provide more power and torque, which will improve fuel efficiency by around 10%. We'll also make Hilux even more capable off-road, including a 700 millimeter wading depth, thanks to well-placed and well-protected electrical systems. With these key updates to Hilux, Proace City, and Proace, plus the addition of Proace Max, we're confident of meeting our medium-term ambition of selling 180,000 LCVs in 2025 and becoming one of the top six LCV players in Europe. Now, BV versions of Proace and Proace City will be extensively deployed at the forthcoming Olympics and Paralympic Games in Paris next summer. They will form part of a passenger vehicle fleet of more than 2,650 electrified vehicles. These vehicles have been chosen to meet a wide variety of mobility needs and at the same time will help reduce overall emissions by half compared to previous games. Let's take a look. In addition to the vehicle fleet, we'll be providing 700 electric last mile mobility solutions. These include 250 C plus Walk T and C plus Walk S and 200 wheelchair e pullers. And these will be further complemented by 250 accessible people movers or APMs. Now you might remember the APM from Tokyo 2020, but it's been completely redesigned and redeveloped here in Europe to better meet local requirements. Let's take a look. The APMs will be used in and around the Athletes' Village and key sporting venues across the Paris region. And I'm pleased to confirm that all the 250 APMs for Paris 2024 will be built here in Europe through our partnership with Salvador Caetano in Portugal. Then, after the Games, the fleet of APMs will form part of our sustainable legacy for Paris and we're working with the French government to plan their use in selected legacy venues such as health centres or retirement homes, sports arenas. These last mile mobility devices will primarily support those with mobility needs over shorter distances. 
for longer distance support, we'll be providing 150 wheelchair accessible electric ProAce Versos. And after the games, these vehicles will also remain in the Paris region to provide specialized personal transport services. The third sustainable legacy Toto will leave behind are the 500 Mirais that we'll be using during the games. Our plan is that they will be added to the already large fleet of over 1,000 Mirai taxis that operate in the Paris region. And talking about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, in total, Toto will bring 10 different hydrogen mobility applications to the games. In addition to Mirai, Toto hydrogen technology will be demonstrated in buses, trucks, coaches, forklifts, and even the boats that operate on the River Seine. All of this supports the ambition of the Paris region to put hydrogen at the forefront of its strategy to ensure renewable energies account for 100% of Paris's energy consumption by 2050. In many ways, Paris will be a great example of the kind of hydrogen ecosystem that Nakata-san mentioned earlier. It's clear that France has great confidence in hydrogen, and so do we. And I know that many of you are also aware that our interest in hydrogen goes beyond fuel cells and into combustion. But before I get into that, let me take a moment to celebrate our outstanding motorsport successes this year. I'm very proud that once again, Toyota Gazoo Racing has secured all titles in the FIA World Rally Raid, World Rally, and the World Endurance Championships. More impressively, this is the second year running that we have achieved a clean sweep of all titles in all championships that we've entered. Running for hours and even days on end, often covering thousands of kilometers in some of the most extreme conditions, these championships are chosen by us to help improve our cars and the people that develop those cars. They also form the most challenging environments in which to pursue carbon neutrality. Our rally and endurance cars are already running on carbon neutral fuels, but we believe we must go further. This is the reason why we unveiled our GR H2 WEC concept early this year, with the intention to compete at Le Mans in the new hydrogen category. Featuring hydrogen combustion technology, our new endurance racer is intended to deliver speed, efficiency, and reliability with a healthy dose of the sound that Akio Toyota refers to as lullaby. We also expect this technology to have a positive impact on the World Rally Series in the future, which is one of the reasons we continue to test and develop it in the GR Yaris and GR Corolla. And we believe it could form a key part of our future rally raid races, including the legendary Dakar Rally. In fact, Toyota is part of the HYSE Research Association, along with Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, and Honda, that plans to run its HYSE X1 prototype vehicle in the Dakar Rally this coming January. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a hydrogen Hilux entering Dakar in the not too distant future. We also believe that hydrogen combustion may still have potential for use beyond racing. Our development of hydrogen combustion started in 2017, and since then, its progress has been highly visible, with the GR Corolla competing in various motorsport events, notably Super Taikyu, where it's been driven by our chairman and master driver, Akio Toyota. This intense activity has delivered impressive advances in power, performance, and efficiency 
In fact, now we're at the point where we have enough confidence in the potential to have introduced a pilot program in Australia earlier this month. A prototype HiACE has been equipped with three underfloor tanks and a modified internal combustion engine with a selective catalyst reduction system to operate with almost zero CO2 and NOx emissions. Initial usage trials will include the transportation of workers and the delivery of goods in the Melbourne area. As you can understand, much of our learning from racing contributes to our enduring desire to make ever better cars right across our portfolio. And this, of course, includes our GR road cars. I don't need to tell you how well the GR Supra, GR86, GR Yaris have been received by customers all around the world. But how to keep these kinds of cars in the future? Gazoo Racing are exploring multiple paths to secure both carbon neutrality and most importantly for cars like these, fun. And I don't just mean rapid acceleration in a straight line. These cars need to engage enthusiasts and they need to stimulate all the senses. E-fuel, as seen in our Supra GT4 racer, could be one pathway forward. Another way could be hydrogen combustion, as I just mentioned. But what about battery electric? Could we make an engaging, stimulating and fun GR product powered solely by batteries? Well, to answer that question, let me invite Simon back on stage. Matt, well, you know, earlier on, I hinted at the extent of our new BEV architecture's versatility. And you know that both our chairman, Akio Toyoda, and our president, Koji Sato, you know, they're car guys. They totally get it when customers tell them how and why they love their cars. And one thing I can tell you for, for sure is that Akio-san believes that the car should never become a commodity. Now, this is true in Europe as it is anywhere. After all, the epicenter of motorport is right here. And we have literally hundreds of GR engineers here working to bring that exhilaration to the mobility era. So from the outset, we made absolutely sure that this new architecture had the potential to create a jaw-dropping sports car. So, a true car lover's Bev, the FTSE. Okay, what do you think? Well, you've got to love that, haven't you? Okay. As Matt mentioned earlier, every GR product has to stimulate all the senses. It can't just be fun to go in a straight line. It needs to make you smile in the corners too. And it should reward people who are prepared to hone their skills and take more control. You know, mastering quick manual shifting with smooth clutch cut action, you know, it always used to feel good. So why shouldn't it be the case with an EV? How about downloading your favorite engine sound and driving dynamics, and you could truly create your own unique experiences, all the while emitting only smiles. And these new experiences, they're only possible 
from a software divine vehicle. And this new BEV architecture, it's the gateway. Now, they say good things come in threes. Three great concepts and three key breakthroughs that make them possible. Number one, component minimization for packaging optimization. Number two, physical and digital synergy for the creation of content from motion. And thirdly, adaptable architecture for maximum portfolio versatility. Now, the future of mobility has never been more exciting, not just because the cars are inspiring and fun to drive, but because as Toyota, we will never forget where we came from and what our purpose is. Toyota always has been and always will be dedicated to mobility for all. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Simon, and thank you also to Nakata-san. Today, we've shared with you an overview of our strategies and our way of thinking. In closing, let me very briefly summarize some of those key messages. As Simon has just mentioned, mobility for all is a mindset at Toyota, a guiding principle of our business. And it's closely connected to our focus on the environment. Today, we've explained the power of our multi-pathway approach to carbon reduction and how it provides solutions to customers who cannot yet, because of barriers like range requirement, affordability, or an immature infrastructure, choose a zero emissions vehicle. You've also heard how our environmental agenda goes beyond the traditional passenger car and light duty vehicle segments, and that our technology is already positively impacting wider transport and mobility sectors, such as trucks and buses, where hydrogen can play an increasingly important role in carbon reduction. I hope you can therefore feel our determination and our commitment to ensure all of our European operations are carbon neutral by 2040, 10 years ahead of global Toyota. We passionately believe that mobility for all also means providing freedom and opportunity to move for people with disability. And at the forthcoming Paris Games next summer, we'll deploy a large number of mobility solutions to ensure that all athletes and guests have the freedom and opportunity to move. Finally, you can see that we are well equipped for a zero emissions future. Just look at the fantastic range of products behind me. The technology beneath the surface, leading edge platforms, advanced batteries, and innovative software will all enhance the experience for our customers. But we will also ensure that our vehicle designs continue to emotionally engage and attract customers. Personally, I can't wait to drive them all, but maybe especially this orange one. I believe Toyota in Europe has never been stronger. Our brand strength has reached record levels and our product power, including powertrain choice, is higher than ever before. But we are not complacent. We have our eyes wide open and we do not underestimate the significant challenges that lie ahead of us. And on our transformational journey, we will remain committed to providing mobility for all and ensuring that no one is left behind. Thank you for your attention.